Hey guys, hope you all are doing well today. My name is Frank Malarsik, and today we're going to be doing a follow-up to the last video I made, which was about using Python in your uh, Google Sheets. And so if you haven't seen that already, make sure to check it out. I'll leave a card up above here, and I'll leave the link in the description as well. So um, you definitely should watch that first because it provides some groundwork for what I'm going to go over today. So in that video, I talked about um, how the Yahoo Finance package actually gave the wrong dates. The dates were one off, so if the date that I should have in my spreadsheet should have been September 10th per se, the uh, Google Finance or the Yahoo Finance package uh, brought it in as September 9th. So I was using a script in Google Sheets to increment that by one, but it definitely was not a good script by any means. And so I wanted to improve that and luckily uh, my good friend Dave at Hidden Freedom Investing uh, gave me some tips and pointed me to the right uh, ways to do it with the Python so then I'm just putting in the right date directly from Python so that's what I'm going to be showing you today and then I'm also going to be showing you how to set up a schedule so that your script can run like every week for example and update all your values uh, for you so you don't have to go do it manually so that's pretty cool okay so we're going to be using the date time module and this basically as it says here it supplies classes for manipulating dates and times so that's what we want to do because we want to add one to the date um, so if we look at the date time object it contains information from a date object and a time object so basically it contains the year the month the day and then hour minutes seconds etc and the important thing to note here is that the year, month, and day are required, but everything else is uh, not required. So that's exactly what we want because we just have a year, a month, and a day in the dates that we're getting from Python. Um, so if we look at this, we have to be able to add one, and you can't just add one, you can't just have a date object and add one to it because you're trying to add a date object and an integer and that's just not going to work. So we have to use what's called a time delta object and sorry, a time delta object that is also in the date time module. And what that does is it's just what it sounds like. It's a change in time. And the good thing about this is that all the arguments are optional. So we're just going to use the days argument and set it equal to one. And then we're going to add the time delta object to our date object with the date that we get from the Yahoo Finance uh, API and then that will make us that will give us the date that we want to put into our Google Sheet but the thing is the Yahoo Finance API gives us a date in a string format in a string object and we want to use a date object so we're going to be using these uh, functions here to convert between a string object and a date object and then back so the strp time method uh, converts from a string object to a date object and so you pass in the string as the first argument here and then the second argument is the format and so basically that's how the date is formatted so in our case it's the month the abbreviation of the month and then there's a space and then there's the day and then there's a comma and then there's a space and then there's the year so if we look down here um, the abbreviation of the month is percent %b and then the day is percent %d and then the year uh, with the century so like 2020 as just opposed to 20 is percent %y so that's what we want um, and then this strf time takes a date object and you just pass in the format you want and then it gives you back a string so we're going to be using both of these okay so let's hop into the code and first off we have to use from date time import date time and import time delta because we're going to be using those types of objects and then I'm also importing OS and I'm using this OS .change directory. I'll explain why that's important later um, so basically what I did is I created a function since I'm going to want to change the date uh, many times I'll just create a function to make it repeatable and so it takes in a string and it's going to make a variable called date and I'm going to set that equal to date time dot strp time and I'm going to pass in the string and then I'm going to pass in that format that we talked about so now it's going to create a date variable or a date object there called date and then I'm going to create a time delta object called add one 
and its days variable or its days instance is going to be equal to one and then the, all, all the other values that are optional will just be zero and then I'm going to add one to the date by doing date equals date plus add one and then I'm going to convert it back to the date back to a string um, called string date using the strf time method and passing in the format that we want and then I'm just going to return that string date and so you see here down here when I use sheet.update underscore cell I just instead of passing in x date I pass in the date plus one function with the x date in there and then same thing for the pay date and also since I figured all this out I implemented it into my main portfolio spreadsheet so you can see here I'm using this spreadsheet instead of just the test one um, so if we take a look at that you can see that all of, I already ran it once and you can see that all these dates are just dates they're not uh, complex import HTML functions like I had before so I just imported them in here and they're all correct and it's all nice and tidy and easy and when I set up my scheduler which I'm going to show you in a second that's just going to make it run every single week and then I won't have to worry about it at all and it should automatically update for me so we're going to hop into the task scheduler and you can find that just by going on the bottom here and searching task scheduler and so basically I have a task here called stock dividend script and if we take a look at that it's going to run at 8 a.m. every Monday of every week starting tomorrow because I'm recording this on Sunday the 13th and when it runs it's going to start this program this batch file here and basically what a batch file is, is it's just telling the computer what to do because normally when you run a Python script you would use the Python command and then run it but you won't have the opportunity to do this here so you have to pass the um, path for the Python application as well. So if we look right here, I use this website as well, I'll link that in the description but basically your batch file, you need to have this uh, here which is you won't need this exact path you'll need whatever path is where your Python is and in this you need quotations as well they don't have that um, and then you need the path where your specific script you want to run is and then you want to write pause and that's just going to make it so that the command prompt stays open uh, when it's running so you can see that it's running I guess so basically you create a file um, just like in notepad and then name it and you just name it with a BAT extension and so I have this file here that I have called auto underscore python dot bat okay so that's basically the overview of that task that's scheduled and so if you want to create a new task you just create basic task up here and it's going to do that for you and you can put in all this information and so it's going to run 8 a.m. every Monday but I'll just run it now to show you what happens so if I go over here I can just run this and um, see it has that uh, script that's in my bat file and right now it's just running so there's nothing really to see but that just shows you that it ran um, and then you can see right here the last runtime is recorded as today right now so um, I just found out about this task scheduler thing and it seems really helpful so uh, you can just kind of have tasks automated and they happen at a certain time and then your script is going to run and update your spreadsheet and you'll never have to worry about it. So also before I forget this import OS I never did explain that so basically I'm just importing OS and then using os.change directory to the folder where my um, Python file, this Python file is stored. And the only reason I have to do that is because when I get these credentials um, right here and authorize my G spread to use my Google Sheet, I'm using this JSON file um, where I'm using it as a key basically and that is located in my Python folder so before I was before it was always fine because I was running the script um, in the command prompt from this Python folder but when I run it in the scheduler then it's not in that folder 
Um, so I have to make sure to just redirect to that folder so I can do that. And if I'm already in that folder and run it in the command prompt, I, that still works as well. So that's why I have to do that. So today's quote is from Steve Harvey. And even though he's a comedian and a funny guy, he's also really inspirational. And he said, your track record for surviving them bad days is 100%. And that's just, when you think about it, it's amazing because no matter how bad your day or week is, all those bad days you've had in the past, you've made it through. So just remember, you'll make it through this day as well. So I'm going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please drop a like below. It would really help out the channel. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate that. And also make sure you check out Hidden Freedom Investing. Um, He's just been super helpful for me, and I just love his videos too, so definitely check him out, and I'll see you next time.